Don Barnes here with Red Barnes Audio. And today we're gonna to look at connecting microphones to the Mac using an aggregate device. Now what this means is for people who wanna use an inexpensive microphone or a USB microphone, there are some very good ones. I'm gonna use the cheapest one I can find. This is a Guitar Hero mic that I stole from, that my kids have had around for five years or so. And it's 20 bucks online with free shipping. Tells you it's a real quality device. And if I can get this thing working with Studio One and an aggregate device, you can get it working with anything. I also happen to have, I have four microphones connected to my Mac for today's demo. So I have the Guitar Hero mic, which is just super cheap. I have a Blue Yeti here, which is a stereo mic, which has input and output. I also have a microphone connected up to an audio box. And then I have the built-in mic that's on the Mac. If you're using a microphone that doesn't have output, then you're gonna to need to create what's called an aggregate device. And that's found, here's the Cliff Notes version, so you don't even have to watch the rest of this video if you want. You can go to the audio MIDI setup. Audio MIDI is what you're looking for, and that's in the utilities folder. And I'll show you exactly how to do this in a second. What's gonna happen is, once you set up an aggregate device, then you can use it with Studio One or Reaper or Logic or all the higher end programs that require, that are going through core audio. And it's a great interface because virtually everything will work with it, but that doesn't mean that it's obvious. So it's easy. So let me show you real quickly that I have all these devices working and then I'll, we'll work backwards and I'll show you what I did to get them to work. Well, so obviously we're looking at Studio One here. And what I wanna show you is that I have these devices already plumbed in, and then I'm gonna work my way backwards and take them all out and put them back in for you so you can see the process. Your standard interfaces are gonna come up automatically. So any standard interface means it has both input and output. So I have an audio box, I have the Blue Yeti, because it has its own headphone jack, which really all your better devices do have and it's the best way to go. You're really, in an ideal world, you're working with an interface and you're going that way. But here's my Guitar Hero mic and I'm using the speakers on the Mac. I also decided to do something different, which is use the input from the audio box and then use the output, which is through the Mac speakers. Now, the one caveat, if you're using the artist or the professional version, you don't need to jump through as many hoops. If you're using Prime and you're just kicking the tires and you haven't paid for it, Prime is free forever, then it only has two inputs and two outputs, which work for most people anyway, especially in a voiceover or narration situation. But what we really want is, if you don't have the paid version, then we need to use an aggregate device. And for example, I can use my Guitar Hero mic and I plumb that in and then I go to song setup. And what you'll see when you have it right is, here's the input, let me grab that mic. I'm scratching it there, the, my meters are working. And then I have the output set as the speakers. And you can see right there, whenever these little blue chiclets are there, that it's right. And then on the input side, here's this one mic. And when I choose this, now, as long as I arm my track, it's something that new people don't always know about, I have to arm it first. And then when I choose record, Boom, now I'm recording through the cheapest mic in the world. This is $20, including free shipping, and you can see it working there. So I'll, I'll play that back. Recording through the cheapest mic in the world. This is $20, including free shipping. So there you go. Now what's happening is we, we, are, we have our microphone working and we have speakers working. If I switch over now, what you do need to know is when I'm doing this, by the way, when people start, they do things the hard way. Uh, after you've been doing it a little while, you'll know the easy way to do things. But most people, if you, if you have an audio box, then what happens is these things just come up automatically. So any standard interface, which means about 90% of you don't need this video because you're gonna pick your interface and it's just gonna work. If it's two in, two out, that kind of thing. And the definition of an interface, if you get something from Focusrite or Behringer or Steinberg or Presonus or Native Instruments or Roland, uh, it goes on and on and on and on, M-Audio, M-Box. All these things have both input and output, and if they have two in, two out, they just automatically work. In this case, I have, a, I have two boxes, one on my PC, one on my Mac. And on the Mac one, I don't have any speakers plumbed in, so I'm just gonna listen through the speakers on the Mac itself. Not recommended. Uh, you really want great quality speakers when you're doing recording, but that's a whole secondary subject. We're gonna leave that for right now. 
So here's what happens if I if I choose the Yeti, I'm going to get the exact same thing that I had before, meaning that uh, there the Yeti is working. You can see it sitting there. They don't have the right picture, but it's a generic picture. And on the outputs, it has its own headphone mix out, and there it just works. And when I choose this, now what's happened is I've just shifted over, and if I want to go ahead and turn on the punch and roll here, then I'm going to do that. And it is doing the pre-roll, and now my Blue Yeti mic, and I'm going to scratch it just so you can see there. There's the Blue Yeti mic. It's sitting on my desk. It's not really even close. And that one, because it has I.O., just works. The audio box just works. To find out about aggregate devices, you go to the Finder and go to the Go menu, Utilities. Now, there are other ways to get here. If you know how to use Spotlight, you could go up in here and type Audio MIDI Setup. If you type that in there, that'll work as well. What I'm going to do is select it here, Audio MIDI Setup. Here's what it looks like if you're in this mode. And I'll bring that up. And here are the aggregate devices that I've already created. There's the Guitar Hero one, which uses the Logitech USB microphone with the built-in output. I have those two checkboxes, and it just works. I also have my audio box, so I have a good interface, and I have the built-in output as well. So the audio box is where the microphone is coming in right now, and I, I can use that one. Or, of course, I can just go to it, and you don't, this one, it's providing input and output without needing to know anything or know any details. It just flat out works. Same with the Blue Yeti microphone. So those are the USB mics or the USB inputs, and that's handling both input and output. And then the two aggregate devices that I created for this demo, which is using my Guitar Hero mic and making a hybrid where I have an audio box, a good interface, but I want different speakers on the output. You can change between those while you're recording, but it's really easy once you know where this is. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna close all this down and I'm gonna go behind the scenes. I'm gonna delete all that and then I'll create them from scratch. So now we're back. I've closed down Studio One just so we can start at the beginning. And this is what people will see. First thing you do, it is good to check sound and make sure that whatever your device is, is being recognized by the Mac. And anytime, so for example, this cheap USB mic, my Guitar Hero mic here, then that one I'm going to want to check. And by the way, if you scratch them, that's a great test. Don't blow into microphones. Engineers will hate you. And the same with the Blue Yeti if I switch to that. And I just want to make sure that they're just, they're working. So everything else, that, that interface and this interface will work. And that it sees that I have the built-in one and the audio box and the USB. So those are, this is the cheap one. So this one will work, virtually anything will work. And when I'm doing it, as long as I touch it and bring it up close to me, it's just sitting on my desk when I'm not using it, then you can see the input level there working. That tells you the machine is seeing it. Now we need any core audio device to see it. So you have to go to step two and that works like this. Switch over to the finder. And uh, it doesn't matter whether you don't have to have any, any windows showing. You need to have this utilities right here, go utilities. There are other ways to get there. Audio MIDI setup. And then that's going to open up this. Now, every once in a while, depending on what you've done, you can get in this weird state where it doesn't show because the window is closed. So let me close out all this other stuff in the background. I don't need sound. We already verified that. So now we have our little mic. We have the ones that we talked about here. Here's the Logitech. We're going to plumb that in with the built-in output, which are the speakers. I'd love to rename that, but I can't do that. So what do you need to do? It's not intuitive, but you go down here to the plus sign and you create an aggregate device. Once that's there, I like to double click on it. And then I want to give it a title so I notice what it is. I'm going to call this one Guitar Hero. Plus, we'll, we'll uh, use the built-in. So I'm going to call this Mac speakers. You can do whatever you want. That's just what I'm calling it. Press enter there. And now all you need to do is get the Guitar Hero mic, which is the Logitech mic. I'm going to use that one for the input and it puts it in here. And then I'm going to use the built-in output. That's the speakers. And now I have two channels of output and then I have one channel of input. And uh, it asks for the clock source here. By the way, I almost always set that to whatever either is the built-in device or the most expensive device. <laughs> so the two that I choose. I haven't. Uh, I have found a few cases where this matters. Ninety percent of the time, it does not matter. But if if yours doesn't work, 
then you'll know that that might be part of it. So now I have the Guitar Hero Plus Mac speakers working here, or at least showing up here as an aggregate device. And while I'm here, I'm gonna create a second one, which is just to allow me to create one, and I'm gonna put the audio box, a really good interface together. So you might have an interface and then want to use your built-in speakers. As I mentioned earlier, don't do that for real. Get yourself a set of good speakers. If you're bootstrapping, anything goes. But once you're past that stage where you can start investing in your business, then get a good interface. So you do want to invest in your business. So we're going to call this uh, A Box Plus Mac Speakers. There we go. And then the one thing that I need to do is when I go through that one, I want to first choose my built-in output. And I'll explain why in just a second. And then I'll choose my audio box. And what that does is, if you're using Studio One Prime, you need the speakers to be on one and two. And the way the, uh, the aggregate device is built, it takes whatever you check first and puts them in the one and two slot. So if I change this around and do it backwards, which is I put the audio box first, then line one and two on the audio box, which I don't have any speakers hooked up to right now, are in the one and two spot. And the built-in output is in the three and four spot. So that doesn't work in this particular case simply because I'm using, because I'm using Studio One Prime. That's the only reason. Once you have Artist, then it's easy in the interface in the product to do it. But Studio One Prime is limited to two input, two output, and it takes the first two of each. So once you know that little rule, then all of a sudden the whole world opens up for virtually every type of device, and it's easy. But I didn't know that at first. So now I have two aggregate devices. I'm going to close that down. Now, what I recommend is that you close end. If you ever see this, choose reopen, and then close it a second time. So if you're in the aggregate devices, have Studio One closed. If you're in Studio One, have the aggregate devices closed. There are some cases where you can make that work, but I find that it just works much better when they're not open at the same time. And then I have to tell you, after you make the devices, if you open up Studio One and it still doesn't see them, you need to reboot your machine. There are some mics I've found that even after you plumb them into a aggregate device, they're not seen by Studio One or Reaper or logic until you've done a reboot of your machine. So there's sometimes a reboot required. And also, and this is a this is a real bonus for the real geeks there, rather than just doing a restart, do a shutdown and then restart. And the reason is when you do a restart, it never reinitializes the USB ports. And I've come across a couple of obscure cases where you actually need a full shutdown and then a restart. All right. So I just built those two, sorry, way too much information. I'm gonna use just the defaults, empty song, say okay. And I, I usually close the browser. And by the way, I don't do any of this stuff on my real one because I already have these set up where I've added a track. I set it size the way I want it. I've armed the track. And then once this is happening, then you can go ahead and now let's go ahead and uh, check our IO and see which one we have plumbed in here. And I'm still in the audio box. So we knew, I knew that one would work, that's easy. Anybody can get that working. You don't have to know anything about this. I change over to preferences. Now I'll choose Guitar Hero, and then I'm gonna choose OK. So let's record something with this and see, see how this works. Brain Surgery, the new do-it-yourself guide. With some common tools that you probably have around the house, like a hacksaw, a drill, vice grips, and of course rags to clean up any messes that might occur, you too can do your own brain surgery. Okay, and you can do it with the Guitar Hero mic if you choose. Uh, that's really a piece of work, but it's working great. So I'd like to recap this for you, just, just to give you a quick overview one more time. So the first thing to do is go into System Preferences and make sure that you look in the sound and you see the microphones on the input side right here, input and check to make sure that the microphones are showing up, the ones you expect, they're, that means they're plumbed in, plugged in, and that, that there's that one. And what you can tell is when I talk into it, when I scratch the top, then I'm gonna see something in this input level right here. For every microphone you wanna put in, this is the first place to go. After you've done that, you'll then go over to the finder you don't really need this open, but if you do have it open, I'm gonna go over here to, to 
the Go menu, go down to Utilities. And then from that, I want the Audio MIDI Setup. I double click on that. Now, sometimes if you've used this tool before, it'll come up and you can see the little dot down here in the tray. Then I need to go Show Audio Devices, and now I can see it there. So I'll close this one in the background just to reduce our clutter. I'm gonna take this and right down here, this plus sign, you go ahead and create aggregate device. It's gonna add it in. You go in here and you rename it, add whatever you want, just like we did on this one. You'll go through and you simply check what you need to have. And sometimes you need to mess with the order, but that's all you need to do. If you get this stuff right, it comes right up and then it'll be available in Studio One. I don't do it with Studio One open. I have Studio One closed and I have on a few occasions, it's required a reboot, as I mentioned earlier. So if you have other questions, be sure to find me in the Facebook group and I'll put the address right here on the screen so you can join us. You definitely, if you're doing narration, if you're doing spoken word, if you're doing voiceover, then you should join us in that Facebook group, ask questions, how this stuff works. And I've got a whole system for doing excellence in recording, excellence in processing, and really cutting your time down. But that's a whole nother story. So if you need some assistance and really wanna do it at a pro level very quickly, get a hold of me. I got a whole program for making that work. Just spent a few years putting together a good system for this. So I hope you have a great day. And this is Don Barnes for Red Barnes Audio, and I'll see you on the wires.